Welcome back to This is Rifle Country, and I'm excited to talk about this rifle right here. And the reason is, is because I really like it. I've had this gun for a while now. This is the Weatherby model sub MOA. And you said, hang on a second, Paul, I just went to their website and they don't have a sub MOA rifle listed. Now, they changed the name of it, but the rifle is still the rifle. This is a 308 bolt action rifle. Uh, and this is one of Weatherby's less expensive models, shall we say. If you've ever priced a Weatherby rifle, they're not cheap. They're not really entry-level guns, but this gun was actually designed to be a lower price point for the Weatherby fan. I'm also excited to talk about this Weatherby rifle because why? Well, if you are in the gun culture and you're in the know, you should know that Weatherby has moved their operations, their corporate headquarters, and their manufacturing right here to Wyoming. That's right. And we're looking forward to their grand opening very soon. So that is a very cool thing. All right, what do we have on this bolt action rifle? We have a heavy match barrel, okay. Not too heavy, but heavier than the standard. Uh, we have a fiberglass stock, and if you look at the stock, yes, I did Duracoat the stock. I put the camouflage, you know, the various green camouflage on there. We got a Harris bipod, we got a nylon sling, and then we have a pad slash butt pouch on the rear. Now, all of these accessories are super easy to find. Just go to Brownells and you can find stuff like that. On top, I have a loophole scope, but this is a little bit different than the norm. This actually is a variable power. It's a 1.5 to 5 power rifle scope. And a lot of folks said, well, Paul, that's a 308 rifle. That's a long range rifle. Uh, it's a precision gun. Why would you only put a 5 power scope on it? Well, depending on where you live, you may not be able to shoot or have an opportunity to shoot your rifle beyond 200 yards, beyond three, maybe even 400 yards. If you live east of the Mississippi, a shot beyond 300 yards is pretty rare. So if I'm gonna be shooting a rifle like this in the one to two to 300 yard range, do I need a 12 or 15 power scope? No, I really don't. So what I did, just to prove a point, I actually put this lower power scope on here. And yes, because I know the dope and I know the adjustments, I can hit targets out to 500 yards with this scope and I have quite often. Now, what am I gonna feed this rifle today? I'm going to feed it the Nosler SSA. This is a 168 grain uh, boat tailed hollow point. Uh, this gun right here really seems to like this ammunition. I can shoot sub MOA or sub inch groups at 100 yards with this gun, even though it only has a five power scope all day long, every day. I wanted to take a second and mention something that a lot of people don't think about when they go to the range. You go to the range and what do you have? You got, well, your, your gun, your rifle, your pistol, your shotgun, whatever. You've got your range bag and it's full of ammo. You might have your ear protection, eye protection, all that, and you're like, I'm good to go. Do you have a traumatic medical kit? This kit right here, I pulled it out of the range bag. It sits in the side pocket, or the, actually the end pocket of my range bag, and it's always there. Every time I go to the range, it's there. It has a tourniquet, it has a pressure dressing, it has gauze, it has lots of other things to deal with emergency bleeding situations. I'm not just talking about band-aids. I'm not talking about that little square plastic box that has a couple of band-aids and a little alcohol wipe and something. I'm talking what do you do when someone is bleeding heavily on the range? You're like, oh, we're all safe, Paul. We're all safe shooters. We know the rules. That will never happen. Yes, it will. I've been on the range twice, two different occasions when people were on the range with me and they sustained traumatic bleeding injuries and I had to help them and assist them. I never ever go to the range without a kit. We sell the pocket lifesaver kits. This is a student kit, it's a small one. We have the larger kits that you can put in a cargo pocket, carry with you. You should always have traumatic medical gear with you when you go to the range. And when you go to the range, make sure that the other people who are with you 
know where the medical gear is and how to use it because it might be you that's bleeding.